A very good morning and welcome. It's an RN Radio 786. Lovely to be in your company. It's uh, still very much misty on the road, so please, uh, you know, just drive a little bit more cautiously and uh, arrive safely at your uh, destination. I'm very pleased at the moment, of course, to be sharing the space once again with Dr. Lady Pandor. I-, I was very, I was wondering this morning as I got up, what do I call you? Um, you know, and I'm sure for very many people yeah. this has been, you know, a very awkward thing because for as long as I know, um, you know, you've been in, in government almost, in parliament, you know, since since 1994. Uh, you were uh, uh, Minister of Education at some stage, Minister of Science and Technology. I was wondering, were you Minister of Higher Education at some stage? I think possibly that's correct. Uh, and then, of course, um, in the more recent um, stint that you were in, in government service, it was Minister of, of International Relations or, or de- involved with the Department of International Relations and Cooperation. So it's a little bit difficult, uh, but I, I suppose we'll settle with Dr. Naledi Pandu. Mm-hmm. Wa alaikum. Wa alaikum <laughs> salam and thank you. Very Are you well? For the opportunity. I am, alhamdulillah. Um, I'm back home, which is always lovely. So I'm in yeah. Cape Town uh, in my house. So I'm not doing the weekly up and down to Pretoria. Yeah. Uh, but I'm keeping busy, alhamdulillah. And, uh, you know, uh, people have been very kind, very interested. Mm. Uh, it's just a different world uh, because, you know, now I'm, I'm writing all my own speeches okay okay uh, and preparing everything and learning to print for myself and <laughs> going to printing shops and stuff like that but uh, you so know you, I'm really so, like, so, what, what, so how does this happen so <coughs> when 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 you've when left the post do you do you drive in a car yourself do you, can you mm-hmm. still drive yeah do you yes. drive yes <laughs> I, have, I have my own car uh, <laughs> i have been given uh, um, support for security yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, because of the situation you're aware of uh, so i do have someone <coughs> but it's just one yeah. uh, person from the vip unit in Gauteng and here Okay. Uh, in, in, in Cape Town. It still facilitates a movement here and yeah, there. Just to assist, yes, and make sure, you know, I'm safe. <laughs> okay, and <coughs> it must have been a shift. Uh, and I think just to get right into it, very many South Africans, aside now for the Muslim community that has grown very fond of you for, for reasons that we understand those to be, not that Palestine is a Muslim issue, uh, just to be very clear about mm. that. But for very many, particularly young black women, I would want to say, they if I look at Twitter, for instance, they adore you. You know, they believe that you are the matriarch that they can become. And I know you you don't like talking about these things. I remember a while ago I was asking you, you know, do you have aspirations to become president? And you said that was never in, in your in your in your your thinking. Then I saw a, a headline that said you regret not taking the vice presidency post, which I'm not certain if that's exactly what you said. But maybe before we get into those things, what what happened? How come you're not no longer back in Parliament? I, of course, I have a working understanding of that. Mm. But for for ordinary folk that don't quite understand the processes for why you're not in parliament why aren't you well um the anc performed badly in the elections and uh, many of us who were on the list who are candidates uh, were below the line in terms of the number that got in so i'm still on their list uh, but i think now that uh, i have graduated from politics <laughs> i doubt that i shall you know uh, be interested really in going back mm. uh, and i think uh, that it's in a way uh, there was a big push by young people in the ANC who wanted those of us who've been uh, in office for a long time uh, to be out and so in a way you know um, but you know every change yeah. uh, is what Allah has determined for you and you've got to look at how you make uh, uh, the best out of that so it's essentially that I didn't get into Parliament. Based on the lists yeah, um, based and on, on the, the proportional system the of the ANC. Of the ANC yeah. <laughs> so that, of course, makes you still feel that you had unfinished business. I mean, you there's still an International Court of Justice application that is in the works. I know it was a little bit of a collaboration between your department and the Justice Department that is now, of course, led uh, your de- your previous department now led by the former Justice Minister Ronald Tamola, so there may be some continuity on that front, uh, and 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 I think for very many people, 
I suppose, I mean, people come and go. But for your own personal aspirations and projects that you were seeing through, I know there was some organi- organ- there was an organizational review of Durko as well, and you know the way Durko functions and and so on and so forth. I'm certain there was a sense on your part to want to have wanted to finish those things. Well, um, I grew up um, as the child of exiles. Yeah, and uh, one thing about exile is there's always change. So, you know, we moved every three or four years, uh, all my life, from childhood. Yeah. So, um, one of the things I learned is to deal with change. Mm. Uh, and to know that uh, what is happening today may not be what is going to happen next week, next year, and so on. So, I have um, I've learned to uh, embrace change. And I believe, you know, alhamdulillah, I was very lucky. Uh, that my parents believed all their children should have education. Yeah. And the reason uh, they s- said they had that determination uh, was they wanted us to always be able to stand on our own feet, both the boy children and the girl children, but most especially the girl children. Your daughter, I shout out a lovely little tribute mm. to you. <laughs> uh, you know, all the media uh, picked up on it, um, you know, talking about how you, the ANC and being an activist is all that you've known. Um, it's all that they know um, you to have been. Um, and sometimes it was difficult to still be mummy at the end of the day mm. Mm. when you're having to travel everywhere your diary is fixed by somebody else yeah. you have very little free time there's a very little scenario where you can wake up and just say i'm going to do gardening today or <laughs> let's go for coffee with aisha whatever the case yeah. may well be um yeah. what, what did you think when you saw that little tribute well um i felt bad in some ways you know i was very uh, 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 uh grateful i love my children uh, that she wrote such a lovely uh, little piece about me uh but you know also they're kind of revealing you to mm-hmm. you know yourself um but talking about that this morning uh my son you know phoned me uh and and I was saying, first Lord, I'm looking for a scarf. I'm busy, you know. And yeah. I, and as we we're driving here, I was feeling, you know, quite <laughs> bad that I didn't, you know, yeah. uh, sort of give him enough time. But I'll call him back later. So you know, you have to, you know, to, there's to many those, parts yeah. to your life. Um, and you know, I've tried. Uh, I think I used to take them to school, mm. um, and you know, I. Um, we didn't have things like, you know, uh, entertainment and all of that. You know, we've never had that life. So it's been family and work. Yeah. That's essentially uh, uh, the life we've had. Uh, I think if we'd had other things, then it would have been a real problem. And Aisha talks about this which is in that tribute where she says that she believes that your life will be anything but idle. Um, which, of course, based on the sort of um people that i've been talking to and sometimes we try to get a space into your diary mm. understand that you're still busy you're yeah. still traveling that mm. sort of thing um, and I- I- is that poli- political work is that organizational work um you know are there things to, to <coughs> wrap up in spite of not being within a ministry within government no um so as you know um i began my professional career as an a teacher yeah and uh, my uh, research interest has always been education mm. and most especially higher education. So uh, I am being invited to speak to a number uh, of education conferences. And uh, just this most recently, I was uh, speaking at a conference of Muslim women. Yes. Uh, and it's uh, an institute uh, in Durban. Uh, that provides learning and motivation uh, uh, for uh, Muslim women of all ages. Mm. So I'm, you know, really doing a lot of public speaking. And internationally, uh, I've been very involved in the African Union, uh, particularly in issues of Africa and the diaspora. Mm. And so I I am going to Brazil, inshallah, uh, uh, next week to speak at an international conference 
on the link between Africa and the African diaspora. Yeah. Uh, with a focus uh, on Latin America and Caribbean. Yeah. So, yeah. So they still keeping busy. They still, so still keeping happening. busy with those interests of mine, gender, education, and of course, Palestine. Yeah. And the cause uh, of justice and human rights. So I'll be speaking in Qatar. I'm uh, uh, due to receive an award in the United States of America okay. from a Muslim organization called Justice for All. So I'll be heading there. And then I've been invited by the Muslim Association of Canada. I'll be speaking there. Well done. So it's and all about there's a huge yes. concern uh, about the Palestinian people and what's happening. Well, you've become uh, such a global in, in voice Palestine today. So uh, I'm sort of a bit worried <laughs> <laughs> that uh, I have, you know, uh, I am being invited yeah. to talk about uh, Palestine, but. When I express this worry to Palestinian friends, they say, no, you must continue. I was going to ask I, about when that. I tell South African friends, um, so one lady said to me, you know what? Uh, Allah sometimes sets a path yeah. and chooses someone, and you've been given this one, so just go, just do it. Yeah. So, you know, uh, uh, I will uh, uh, continue to talk about what South Africa tried to do. And <coughs> what I've... Uh, begun to do as we talk about this is to try and interweave uh, in the contributions I make the nature and character of South Africa's struggle against apartheid mm. and uh, how uh, it might be necessary uh, for our brothers and sisters in Palestine to look at our own strategy and tactics mm. and to seek to mirror uh, some of what we did. Uh, but I think uh, their condition is far worse uh, than what we experienced. But I do think uh, South Africans have the contribution, <coughs> both of the aid that we're giving, but most particularly of having waged uh, a struggle um, that we have theorized quite a lot and that we can describe, you know, in clear terms. So. I talked to them about issues of mass mobilization yeah. <coughs> of organizational form, uh, which is very important. Uh, you know, international solidarity and utilizing uh, solidarity to mount a universal campaign. So I'm trying to share, you know, some of what we did and uh, synthesize and, and I think it's what is possible. It's there. testament to what I've noticed as a common theme in your speeches in the last uh, while, in, even in government. Uh, you've been stressing the necessity to organize, to close spaces, to, 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 to ensure solidarity is met with action. That, that's the sort of thing that I've been hearing a lot from you in, in recent times. So this is, is pretty much on par, certainly, with, with, with that commitment that, that you've given. How, how, how did the decision come about? You know, to, for instance, bring the application. I, I'm curious to know. I know Zane Dango, the DG, mm. was very much involved in putting the team together and mm. so on and so forth. Who decides that sort of thing? Because even in government, there are persuasions mm. um, with different interests. I'm certain thereof. Um, and so to say already you have an ANC and then an ANC minister that is as vocal as she is on, on what's been happening. But then the goal almost, you know, to say, let's bring an application and put Israel on, on trial. And of course, I, I don't think you were under any illusion that those international mechanisms were going to bring justice in a way that we hoped it would have. Mm. Um, so, so, so just to to, to talk me through that particular process because it, it almost takes guts, to, you know, because it's not just one entity, Israel, that you're looking at. It's a myriad of other partners that certainly brings you into into crosshairs. And so uh, maybe just to, to pick up on that, please. Mm. Um, I'm always a bit uncomfortable because it's a government thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's not Naledi. Uh, and so I think that's uh, something... Uh, which I should always stress. And of course, I'm just recently out of government and I don't know how much I can say, you know, about what happened. But it is public knowledge 
uh, that the decision to approach the ICJ was a government decision mm. uh, taken by cabinet in a cabinet meeting. And so President Ramaphosa led from the front. Um, the uh, original uh, proposal was made uh, to me uh, by uh, Professor Dugard, who kept sending messages through others. Mm. Uh, why is South Africa not going to the ICJ? Uh, why is South Africa not using the Convention on Genocide? Because clearly a genocide is underway. Uh, why, you know, uh, is no one using international instruments? So I was getting these messages and people are sending them to me like I'm the one, you know, uh, who should uh, act on, on these things. So it's possible they were also sending the same messages to Minister Lamola as yes. Minister of Justice. And of course I had Ronnie Casserles who was messaging me all the time. <coughs> um, and then uh, Minister Lamola sent me a note in a meeting and said, why uh, don't you initiate uh, a case utilizing the convention on the crime and punishment, mm. uh, the punishment of the crime of genocide. So I thought, hmm, all right. So I uh, discussed it with the DG, Zane Dangle, and uh, Zane has been a committed activist for the Palestinian cause for many, many decades. And uh, he immediately said, yes, you know. So I said, but why are they all approaching me? And he said, no, Minister, on the convention, the initiating minister is you. Mm. Even though it's a justice matter, it, it's foreign affairs that initiates. Mm. So I said, okay, let's do a memo to government first. Yeah. Because we can't go on our own. So, so that, that memo goes to cabinet goes secretary? To cabinet, yeah, and then, and then they yeah, put yeah, it yeah. on. So we did it now. It was already late in the air. It's late 22. Uh, uh, 20, yeah, 23, yeah, yeah, and so we had to move it quite speedily. So I, uh, you know, spoke to our president, told him about the discussions we've been having and the approaches, and that you know I intended to uh, bring this memo, and I would ask him to allow it to come before others. Yeah, um, and you know, and he said, all right, I want to see it before you know it's finalized. So we work lays with his office and particularly advocate Jele, who was his legal advisor. Uh, and yeah, so we got the memo done. Cabinet approved. Uh, and sent it through to cabinet, explained. And really the reaction in cabinet was, phew, yes, it should have been done long ago. Yeah. You know, because they were always asking, what's happening? What are we doing about Palestine? Why yeah. are we not doing more? So then we moved. And what a style of a legal team we had. Um, yeah, you know. indeed. I mean, they put an incredible team uh, uh, together. Uh, and it was Justice, uh, the Justice DG, and uh, Zane Dango, DG of uh, International Relations. They they worked. We essentially worked uh, throughout December. I understand yeah. that, but right up uh, to Christmas. Even day, on, yeah. you know, right up. Uh, till uh, Christmas Eve we were phoning and you know uh, that paragraph you know you've just missed this add that uh, mm. yeah. <laughs> and when that application is filed and it is heard <coughs> in between that there's a lot of pot shots being taken uh, both domestically mm. as well as internationally I know uh, no, what we what I did because I know uh, you know what the reaction will be um, so I did ask cabinet no statement uh, that I, you know I will make the statement once we submit, but until submission, mm. nothing. And most unusually, we didn't have a single leak. Not one. We were able to prepare under the radar, did everything, then sent in our submission, and we we announced. Uh, we had to do that because uh, there are many people uh, who probably have influence, I yeah. don't know. And if they know, you know, some of what you're planning, they will find a way, you know, of interfering. We just, I knew, so I just asked that we just say nothing. Yeah. And only the circle, you know, uh, uh, was working and we're very, very careful about that. 
all down to a WhatsApp message yeah. between you and Minister Lebola. That's so right. That's Minister right. Lebola being in that being your successor, you have yeah. every confidence that I, he I will do, see this know, through. I do. He's an energetic young man, very knowledgeable, um, and I believe he will be committed. And I've told him I'm watching him. <laughs> <laughs> we have Dr. Naledi Pando in studio with us this morning. Uh, it is indeed Radio 786 and 100.4 FM. Uh, we are catching up with her, looking at how life is at the moment after having left government um, and uh, looking at some of her last couple of um, you know days, months in office. Now that's been and what certainly uh, some of her her feelings are on a whole host of issues, uh, certainly that, that we hope to cover uh, this uh, morning you're welcome to send us a whatsapp on 0786 10 uh, 11 12 it is nrn 100 point uh, four fm after the application is filed the matter is heard we all feel terribly emotional i remember standing in the office here at the back everybody was watching the legal team and i thought goodness me like there were so many layers to this um a a, a black african country arguing the legal profession in the way that it was brilliant stuff the diversity in the room itself um you know the team itself it looked like south africa putting its best foot forward and i felt you know terribly proud about that particular moment mm. and then the, the the courage at which of course you guys batted for this particular application um did it come to you personally at with some let's call it displeasure and how some may have received it uh, because i know there was at some stage talk about your security being mm. beefed up etc yeah, were there genuine threats yes yeah there were i mean i wouldn't have gone to the minister of police if uh, you know uh, there weren't so i was getting messages and uh, <clears throat> you know they were saying they know my children especially harun my son uh, uh, and uh, that you know i must be where now <laughs> now <laughs> yeah now <laughs> not now now <laughs> yeah i must be where now you know that they know me and so on yeah. so yeah. yeah and um i also know i know now that everywhere i speak there's someone yeah from that whatever it is who's there because they quote verbatim even jokes i make or you know so they they are in the room or they have people in the room. I was at Rhodes recently, and they could only have written the article they wrote because someone was, was there. Someone yeah. was there. So. <laughs> and uh, I, I suppose to you, with your very vast experience, um, you, you're not too cheesed off by it. Uh, you, of course, need to put the necessary in place, yeah. and government needs to put the necessary in place. Mm. Uh, but there's obvious concern for the family, for your yeah. sons that, that are receiving these messages, etc. Um, uh, but but nonetheless, we, we go on, and, and you know, government must do what it needs to do. The mm. application is heard, and so on. Some felt still that this ICJ was a damn squib. You know, it, it didn't really gain to achieve what South Africa was hoping to achieve. I mean, even the simple request for a ceasefire was a contestable issue. Mm -hmm. And many months after that application is filed and heard, and, you know, South Africa goes back to say, uh, you know, give us the remedy now because look at what's happening now. Mm -hmm. And it, it almost appears since that December, January, when that process was underway, things have gotten so much more worse mm -hmm. um, in the extent of the genocide that's been committed. And so it, it's, it's, I suppose, an indictment mm -hmm. on, on international mechanisms that are there, but clearly not effective. Mm. No, indeed. I mean, I can't disagree with you. Uh, certainly, uh, it does point to terrible uh, inadequacies uh, in the international frameworks that are meant to protect uh, and ensure peace and security. Uh, and we know this. I mean, South Africa has been arguing for over 10 years in the United Nations that there's an urgent need for reform. Uh, and this is clear proof uh, of the need uh, uh, for that. Um, I, I uh, describe it this way. Uh, indeed, we haven't achieved the victory, which is the freedom mm. uh, and self-determination <coughs> for the people of Palestine. But one of the things we've had about Israel is the highest levels of impunity and protection. You know, for example, that the international media is almost solidly behind the Israeli state. Mm. 
and presents a picture that erases the Palestinian identity um, and presents Palestinian people as some terrorist grouping uh, who have no uh, uh, interest to the world. We place the issue on the world stage as South Africa. We all put all evidence of our belief that there's genocide before the international stage for all the world to see. So suddenly, this nation that has enjoyed this impunity is fully exposed in the greatest detail mm. to the world. And even if you are the largest supporter, you have to begin to ask questions. That's why even countries that stood up before the case, when it became known that we'd made a submission, mm. before the hearing even, said it was without merit. Mm. A few months later, they've been saying in Israel must respect international law. It's because they know this is weighty. It's a weighty judgment. Mm. Uh, and I think we shouldn't fail to appreciate that an important step, a critical step, has been taken by South Africa. Yeah, and it always makes me think about, um, you know, when the moment arrives, the necessity and the need to raise your voice and not be guided by what the response may well be. The importance is that your voice is heard and your, your, your protest is, is registered. And, and then maybe then to understand how the ANC moving forward you know, is going to get around the complexities with what we understand to be a Palestinian leadership. And, and you've, you've in part in here and there been hearing you also be a little bit critical about the Palestinians needing to also determine their, their leadership squabbles and issues that they have. Mm. Because when, of course, you speak at the campuses that you do and the forums that you are in and you're raising these sorts of issues, of course, the hope at some stage will be that, that, that we can hold Israel to accountable one of the things that I think you've got a little bit of heat on is the interpretation on a two-state solution and whether that is still a viable option. Mm. Um, and so maybe just then to work, to deal with the leadership issue together with a, a two-state solution, which is an ANC government position. Yeah. Um, and, and of course, I'm not going to ask you to, un that's, there are very many different committees in the ANC at a policy conference to do that. But it is a critique nonetheless, and I'm hoping to hear a response on that, mm. that is a two-state solution still a viable consideration? I don't know. Um, that will be determined by the negotiators. I do know the matter will be settled by negotiations. Uh, I don't think it's possible to have a successful uh, insurrection against the Israeli state with the support they enjoy uh, from uh, NATO countries. Uh, and so in the end, uh, the, the West can't keep up the level of support, mm. just as happened with apartheid South Africa. And so there will be uh, uh, negotiations. And it is for those affected to determine what form of outcome they want. Mm. If they desire a two-state solution, the matter of illegal settlements will have to be dealt with, uh, because we believe that a self-determining Palestinian state must have contiguous territory and not be a Bantustan-like entity with bits here, bits there. So those matters would have to be addressed. And we'd have to see, you know, will Israel and its partners have the courage uh, to do that? Otherwise, you are brewing a situation where you will have a level of response from the people that will totally eliminate the possibility mm. of peace and security. So uh, I hope that uh, Israel will have, uh, at some point, mature leaders who realize that they need to have a genuine uh, process and to respect uh, issues of uh, human rights and self-determination. Yeah. Uh, so I don't know, uh, but the policy remains. It is the position uh, in the United Nations, but just as with ourselves, uh, it is the people affected will decide. Mm. On the matter of uh, the factions, uh, it is important uh, that you do address that. See, we had various liberation movements, 
but we were we were a much bigger population. Mm. Uh, you're dealing uh, with much smaller uh, uh, population and with, uh, I think, a level of commonality uh, that should help to unite. Uh, you can't have PLO and Fatah on one side, then you have Hamas and maybe other groups uh, all existing and jockeying uh, in a situation where you don't enjoy mm. uh, self-determination. So you've got to find a way of working together because as our own uh, organizations realize, unity is strength. So I, I do think uh, that if they're to address the core issue, which is freedom, mm. uh, they, they have to come together. They must find a way. And I'm glad the Chinese uh, have begun assisting uh, with those discussions uh, between the different groupings and have already hosted two meetings I hope that that will continue. Um, and then uh, the ANC is very clear. Every ANC conference since the advent mm. uh, of the unbanning has adopted a resolution on Palestine. Yeah, And there's passion uh, for the cause of the people of Palestine in the ANC. How they will manage the government of national unity uh, is going to be of great interest. But I noticed <coughs> President Ramaphosa made reference to Palestine and the policy of the ANC and the past government mm. uh, four times. Uh, in, 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 yes, indeed. <laughs> uh, I'm paying close attention. Uh, so clearly, yeah. you know, uh, uh, there, is, uh, there is commitment. But uh, <coughs> we have a strong enough civil society uh, supporting South Africa yeah. to continue anyway. Yeah, the, the, the basis uh, is But there. I think having government, and I, I believe solidly uh, that the ANC would not, you know, betray yeah. uh, this cause. Truthfully speaking, how annoyed were you with the Democratic Alliance that, you know, joined this, this chorus of saying, you know, focus on local issues, mm. why are you doing this, um, you, are, you are taking the parties further apart from a negotiated settlement. Um, <coughs> you had John Stienazen, uh, that's a minister today, uh, going to Ukraine when that saga played itself out, um, and of course struggled to find their position on this uh, genocide that that's happening when you sit in government when you're minister and you see these sorts of things of course there are things politically that you are allowed to express yourself on in parliament but of course you you're still a minister and so there's a level of of let's call it decorum that needs to be uh, observed uh, and so and so now when you think a little bit back about these sorts of things and and particularly parties like the democratic alliance uh, and I think something that you've raised yourself, which is a question I've been wanting to ask you, is 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 whether the ANC's DNA on policy in government, whether it's it's particularly under threat with the circumstance that we have right now. I, I hope not. Uh, the ANC has survived for over a hundred years, and it has survived on core principles and values, and those have to be retained and there are enough of us yeah. who would want to ensure that they are retained. Uh, so I don't want to, you know, speak like I'm still a minister, I'm not. Uh, but I can say that I'm a good debater and so I never left issues, you know, unaddressed. Um, there's massive hypocrisy uh, in, in many uh, who have been privileged uh, in our country under apartheid. And uh, they also neglect <coughs> to recognize that due to our magnanimity, we never sought vengeance of any kind. We included and sought to build a united uh, South Africa. And they don't appreciate what that magnanimity means. You know, you have a black people in this country, and by black for me, it's all of us. You know, it's not a component. Uh, you have people who are absolutely amazing. I mean, I think the level of humane appreciation among black South Africans is absolutely incredible. Yeah. Um, and that has built in us an attitude of responsibility toward others. I uh, was explaining um, 
to international delegates at the Islamic uh, Medical Association yeah. uh, conference. The one in Durban. The right? one in, no, it was here in, in uh, oh, yes, Somerset, yes, West. Somerset West. Oh, yeah. yes, 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 that's right. Yeah, so I, I, I gave a, a talk, I'll, maybe I'll send you a copy of it. And I, I was telling them that uh, I, I actually uh, am amazed that South Africans, under the weight of colonial oppression, they were developing instruments and frameworks mm. which spoke of freedom that were world class uh, in the level of philosophical understanding of yeah. humanity so i mean how does an oppressed people mm. develop a freedom charter yeah you know they should be developed other they, 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 they're not spending so, time feeling so oppressed the, and, the, and the yeah. level of sophistication mm. on issues of human dignity is extremely high and this is why you need South Africa to be involved in supporting the people of Palestine. Yeah. Because we've got this something we've integrated that's absolutely incredible. Mm. A spirit of fighting, but an appreciation of where society should aim yeah. to be. So the, for me, the DA uh, and uh, parties like it, they're very hypocritical. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, they're driven by, by hypocrisy. And we know, I mean, I remember uh, when the war uh, 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 between U Russia and Ukraine uh, 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 began, uh, they were very concerned. And you remember that CNN journalist yes, who gave yes, herself yes. away and said, it's happening to people with blue eyes like us. You know, <laughs> I mean, this is, you know, yeah. um, this is how I think uh, some of our uh, uh, colleagues must be. I hope uh, that the ANC uh, will continue uh, to be attentive uh, to issues of uh, values yeah. and principles. Cause that's what shapes you. How 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 shocked were you uh, with the election the results? Um, I was stunned. You know, and that means I'm foolish. Someone wrote because I wrote a, a, a note on that. And they said I, I was foolish, you know, naive. I should have, you know, it means I wasn't reading the polls. I was reading the polls, but I was campaigning as well. Yeah. And we were getting a level of support in the public domain uh, that, you know, I had not sensed for uh, uh, some uh, years of, of campaigning. So I thought we'd do better. I did have the sense we wouldn't do as well as previously. Not as bad. But I thought we'd get 50 plus one at yeah. least. Uh, and we didn't, and I, I, I got quite a shock. And I, I still would love to do an analysis of what actually... Uh, uh, Province is not doing it at the wrong. moment. Yeah. I know Gwede is in the uh, case <coughs> in today uh, for, for that assessment. Yeah. Gauteng just did theirs, and uh, Panyazali Sufi has been very frank about it. He said, the ship is sinking, and if we don't do simple things... And he started out the meeting by well, saying, comrades, why are you coming late for a meeting that was already ordained, you know? Yeah. You know, can can we take ourselves seriously? You know, and 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 the writing is on the wall. Is 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 how Frankie is is yeah. almost talking now. Do you think it's what is it? Let, let me ask you that. What, what do you think it is? I think there's some arrogance. Uh, uh, you know that you get power, uh, and then you think it'll be with you forever. Mm. But actually, it's just a momentary gift. Uh, I also think. Uh, that the ANC was not fully alert to how the public uh, was feeling about this lack of delivery. I, I really, there are things I look at uh, and see and I wonder, how is this possible? Because I know we have resources, mm. you know, uh, in South Africa. So there are failings uh, on addressing, you know, programs uh, that we've committed uh, to address for the people of our country. Uh, so, you know, we failed uh, on, on uh, aspects that really are at the heart of people's concerns. Mm. Uh, and then, of course, the electricity issue uh, lasting for so many years. So we created in the mind of uh, the people of South Africa uh, that we're a bunch of incompetence. And I think they said, yeah, we, we can't have this any longer. Mm. Um, so what I hope the government will do now 
is show that we have the capability to address all these things. If they don't, then I think we're in more serious trouble. But you do realize the risk that, 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 that some have been highlighting is that with this GNU scenario that we have, uh, that you could have the ANC subsumed into into something that it will never be or, or something that it... it it risks losing its identity um, and you, you could sit with what pretty much Europe has become. It is governments of, of minorities, governments of whatever bits of votes are clamoured together to form a government. Oh. Well, uh, I'm, I'm just an ordinary uh, pensioner. <laughs> you must get Khalid and Cameron here yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, to talk on those issues. But as a member of the organisation, I will continue to participate. Mm. Uh, in programs to, uh, to strengthen it. I think we need to get rid of bad characters. Uh, we need people of integrity. But for me, the core issue is people must feel there's a difference because the ANC exists. Yeah. And not all people feel that. And that is the major issue we must address. It's NRN Radio 786, 15 minutes now before 9 o'clock. I have the uh, pleasure to sit down uh, this morning with Dr. Naledi Pando, who's been for the longest time uh, a member of the ANC, um, you know, even before 94, as she explains, you know, that life uh, going back and forth in and out of exile, um, you know, and, and, and really a life being as busy as it's been for the last, what, 30, 40 years. Um, and now having to, to chill and take it easy a little but uh, more so than did most. Uh, Katie McKenzie, a funny character, the minister of what's it? Sports, arts and, arts and culture. Cal sports, arts and culture. He was saying, he was commenting the other day, saying, you know, ministers don't get paid enough. Yeah. You know, he was saying, you th you think, you know, yeah, they, they get paid a lot money. of money. He says, <laughs> he says, Yarr. you know, from morning till night time, yeah. your, your day is filled, <laughs> completely filled. And, and I suppose for you, it was a little bit worse because you also traveling mm. all the time and yeah. so having to adjust to timelines and then the pro to call having to be ready when the president comes to receive him and meeting with all these other and people only leaving leaves. after he leaves and not before him and yeah it <laughs> seems very tiring yeah. but how did you as you know of course now you are antina lady you know <laughs> that we all know that we all love but um as somebody that you know grew up in in this movement and became minister and and yes in the different roles that you've played there was always the decorum and things that involved being a minister but now you're sitting with xi jinping in the same room you're sitting with vladimir putin you of course president to president speaks to each other but you know since you play in this particular role there are some times where you're in the room and you get to say something uh is that a daunting thing to to experience mm. Yeah, it is, of course. Yeah, you, you say stupid things, you know, then <laughs> you feel so ashamed, you know. But uh, alhamdulillah, um, we were always fortunate. Um, I was really uh, thrilled, you know, the expansion of BRICS happened at yes. the South African summit. And I uh, was the uh, minister seeing off uh, President Xi Jinping. So as uh, uh, he was getting onto the stairs of the uh, his aeroplane, uh, he said something to me in Chinese and the interpreter said the president says you have achieved something fantastic oh. and so I said oh thank you Mr. President that's so kind of you but it's you as well you know it's the our leaders and then he spoke again and she said he said you have achieved something fantastic so me you know yeah. and I, yeah, I walked away from it. <laughs> you know, yeah, so you, you day, have, yeah, you have period, uh, yeah. those opportunities. But it can be exhausting. Yeah. But let me tell you a really funny thing. Um, now I'm traveling on my own, yeah. right? And previously you were escorted through a protocol lounge. Now, boy, <laughs> you're on your own. The queue like all sure, of us. So you're in that queue, you know. <laughs> <laughs> You know, <laughs> and, yeah. <laughs> and then you know, can I take a selfie? Can I take a photo with you? Do, 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 you know, um, so it's 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 interesting lessons. But fortunately, uh, you know, you know uh, that it's going to end sometime. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, that's fine. Is there something that sticks with you um, that you, if you sit with the grandchildren one day and they're doing a school project? Or they and they have to interview somebody important or somebody that has an interesting story. 
what story are you telling them oh gosh so many uh generally i talk about you know about family yeah. about history uh and loving family uh and uh you know just to seek to be contented and and to be you know a happy person i used to have our first grandchild was very close to us because you know she mm. was the first it was the first one yeah and uh one of the things she liked was that uh, I should make up stories, you know, mm -hmm. for her. So we invented characters. Okay. And I uh, made sure that the characters had Muslim names, yes. right? So, so, so we had a little friend called Khatija and had a friend Fatima, and yeah. then my daughter, my granddaughter Ayla. And I would weave stories around them. And she loved them. So she's now 12, and yeah. they were here. For, they live in the U.S. And she came uh, uh, just recently, and she was sitting with my husband and I. She said, Granny and Grandpa, I'm your first granddaughter. Do you remember our stories about Khadija <laughs> and Fatima? And I said, yes, now I remember. <laughs> so, you know, just really lessons about happiness, but also about work yeah. uh, uh, and the importance of being responsible and paying attention uh, to what you know what you you need to do and always holding up your end yeah, yeah i'm a f i'm a very conservative person unfortunately uh you know i don't have those the, funny stories and stuff well they 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 are rare these days the conservatives uh, so, so 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 please do not feel you know in any way about that um and, and so and so when you then i mean it doesn't sound to me like you're slowing down really uh, maybe a little bit from mm. the pace at which you yeah are used to um and particularly in the last and as, as being minister of I international relations there were lots of moving parts all over the time and i wanted to talk a little bit about african politics and mm. why it's really just such a challenging thing it's it's almost tiresome yeah. sometimes to, to reflect on uh when we see what we see and then your fight isn't just about the domestic issue in that country but it's mm. about competing interests that you know find itself in in the african political context mm, and then mm. the african union that seems mm. terribly c complicated and so on and so the world almost seems like a terribly complicated place to live at the moment and so i i'm i'm, I'm wondering whether there are glimpses of positivity that you see on the horizon and and, and i ask this question because we have an upcoming an election in america and we see how that society is polarized we've seen it in brazil uh, we've seen it in different parts of asia latin america etc and of course in africa and, and so south africa is 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 somewhere sometimes in that space as well and so in in, a, in 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 simple terms what i'm asking you is is to maybe contemplate whether you believe society is moving in a better space at the moment or whether there's a lot of work to cover Mm. in building societies <laughs> yeah. it's, a, it's a i suppose a question for a thesis it is <laughs> but, but a penny for, it penny is. for your you, thoughts you on should that. have a conference on that <laughs> um I, I think the world is in a very difficult space at the moment uh when i speak of it this moment as with many uh others uh i refer to it as an inflection point you know yeah. uh, we have choices to make as the world our leaders in particular because really it is the leaders mm. Uh, who are, you know, shaping the character of our society. So they need, especially leaders of the South, to make a decision as to how they use this inflection point. Will they put it to the good to fundamentally alter mm. current practices, or are they going to continue on the same path? Um, for the African continent, we now have an opportunity. Next year, the African Union is electing new leadership and uh, I'm hoping that our country South Africa will at least put up two candidates for the leadership of the African Union as commissioners in different yes. sectoral uh, areas um, so we must make a major contribution to the development uh, of the African continent because it is sorely in need of practical action it's sorely in need of peace and security mm. 
in all the uh, work I've agreed to uh, to do, uh, some of which will be revealed uh, uh, in a few uh, weeks, uh, I've also determined that I wish to give attention to peace and security on the African continent. Uh, I, but I, I think, you know, at the moment, we're in a bad space, and uh, where we're going to go is still being defined. Mm -hmm. It's difficult to see the trajectory uh, until possibly after the election uh, in the United States of yeah. America, uh, and then for us, uh, the conclusions of the AU elections, uh, election, electoral uh, 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 processes. Um, but, you know, as I look uh, uh, at what is happening in the world, I think of our great books, the Quran, the Bible. Yeah. And uh, I don't know if you remember those verses uh, where the Almighty says, I will visit pes pestilence, yeah. famine, yeah. and death um, uh, uh, upon you because of the ills that you commit i feel like we're almost in that space and we've got to find a way of reversing yeah and, and, uh, and in even, order you to know, one, you know address what we should and, and even a quranic passage further that says you know i won't change the condition if you don't quite yes, do exactly. something about yeah. it um last i have got loads of whatsapp messages in which i'll try and make my way through some of them uh, but one of them says my 10 year old twins were quite ecstatic to hear you on their favorite radio station as Allah had decreed, we were stuck in traffic for them to hear a snippet of your interview. Now, in the beginning stages of this interview, I was talking about when I canvass uh, social media. Uh, you know, I, when I when I see uh, young, particularly African black women that are in awe of the courage you show, the 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 confidence you have, etc. What you have to say to it's a, it's, a, it's always a difficult thing. Mm. You know, all the sprays that's been given, and I'm sure certain mm, you yeah. you get a little bit tired sometimes of it. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, people do look up to mm. you, um, and there very there may well be very many more Doctor Naledi Pandos that could be developed and could be inspired by your trajectory in life. You know, had ups and downs, challenges here and there. Um, but you've almost come full circle, you know, mm. in this last mm. couple of couple of months and years, and so you can sit back now. Of course, as you say, you're not going to be sitting idle, as Aisha also said in, in that letter. Uh, you still have a lot of things to do, and in so doing, is potentially inspiring new Lady Pandos on that agenda. I hope so. It must be really. It's a responsibility because we still don't have equality. Uh, for women uh, in our society and so uh, I hope you know through us many uh, uh, women of uh, my age and my experience uh, young women see that it is possible to break the glass ceiling and that uh, they they continue uh, uh, to strive uh, but to all of them I always say please pay attention to your education uh, that's the first task mm. you must address and from there things will grow uh, and so uh, uh, do take uh, your schooling uh, very very uh, seriously but as you grow as young women realize that the battle for equality is not fully won mm. uh, and don't become complacent you know with struggle uh, you shouldn't think you know everything has been won just because somebody is achieving uh, a particular a victory. Mm. Uh, a struggle must be one that impacts on everybody. And for uh, young women, I sometimes worry uh, that they look and say, oh, there's a woman president, there's a woman this, you know, mm -hmm. and think, yeah, it's all done. But it isn't. Uh, the battle against discrimination continues and we must uh, be alert yeah. to it. Uh, bear, bear with me. I just want to go through a couple of WhatsApp messages uh, before people get upset <coughs> for not having mm. 
not just read it, but having you heard what they've said about <laughs> about this discussion, so let's let's go there very quickly. Uh, Dr. Naledi Pando, a phenomenal lady with such grace and integrity, alhamdulillah, we are blessed to have such a shining example and a beacon of truth and justice. Shukran to Dr. Pando for her sterling role in South African politics, so for her ongoing role she continues to play within the country. What is Dr. Naledi Pando's thoughts on the way uh, forward pertaining to Palestine in the current GNU? We dealt with that. Uh, would love to hear a message from Dr. Pando to women and young people. We've just done that. Uh, to Shirik and Khalil and the NRA team, salute and hats off uh, to Minister Naledi Pando for setting foot the footprint on the international arena with regards to freeing Palestine at the ICJ. And the, with great guts and zest, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant Naledi Pando and all people hidayah. I mean, inshallah. Oh. Naledi Pando, women of resilience with lots of love and du'as from Fozia Jamal Khan. Oh. Um, Madam Naledi Pando, you are truly loved by many. I have uh, DA friends that admit that they will vote for you any day. You are truly adored and loved by many, says that one in there. Um, just don't tell John. <laughs> brilliant, brilliant interview with our beloved Auntie Naland, uh, N- Naledi. Uh, please do another one. Uh, what an endearing woman, a wonderful role model, and a competent personality of note and a devout Muslim. I love you, Dr. Naledi Pando, for the pleasure of the Almighty. May Allah grant you, you, you and your entire family, Afia Amin. Um, uh, t- 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 uh, Asalaamu Alaikum, Dr. Naledi and everyone at Radio 786. Uh, Doc, you are a phenomenal woman. As a Muslim woman, you have made us proud and showed your strength and your competency. It reminds me of Sayyidina Khadija, Sayyidina Aisha and Asia, and a true fighter like Sayyidina Nusayba, really a role model to men and women, alhamdulillah. Um, Assalamualaikum to all in studio. Congratulations and slumber to Dr. Naledi for a job well done. I truly appreciate all your efforts in government and taking the Palestinian fight to the world's biggest stage. It's disappointing though and a let down by the ICJ and the ICC. I believe that there's a major collusion of Western states uh, involved. We are still waiting for the arrest warrants of the Zionist state as murderous genocidal criminals, says Nizam in the 0786. 10, 11, 12. Um, MashaAllah, what a t- to listen to the Honorable Dr. Lady Pando on my favorite radio station. Shukran so much for all you've done for our country, for our women of our country, and of course our Palestinian brothers and sisters. You are a living legend and a true inspiration. Alhamdulillah. Hashtag Girl goals. Okay. <laughs> uh, well done, Tishirik. Excellent interview. Uh, thanks very much for that. Uh, we need Dr. Naledi Pando to remain in the public discourse and to advance a whole host of issues as as uh, have been highlighted. Yeah, Dr. Naledi Pando, uh, we love you with all our hearts from Abida Sunday and family and lots of other loves and messages of <laughs> praise and things that I'm certain Dr. Naledi Pando appreciates very, very, very much. All right. Thank you Zaka. very much. I, 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 I really hope that um, this has been <coughs> a, a fruitful conversation and uh, may we have very many more. Um, you know, it's not a, oh, it's not the final conversation. I am yeah. certain that we will have. Uh, but it's been a pleasure to, to chat to you and I, I'm certain there are very many people, uh, as you would have heard here and elsewhere, that want to thank you for mm. your service, uh, your contribution, your sacrifice you know to f- all of the the family events and things so thank mm-hmm. you very much uh, and uh, inshallah allah preserve you for very many more years inshallah.